Hello brothers and sisters, many blessings in Yeshua HaMashiach. This is Christian Watchman. Um, I want to talk to you about uh, an experience that my mother had when she was uh, maybe recently married to my dad. Uh, she was, they were practically newlyweds. Um, my mother was and still is a true Christian. Uh, born again and baptized and cleansed with the blood of Jesus or Yeshua and my dad was a Catholic so you know my dad being a Catholic um, he had pictures and paintings of saints and i um, sorry about that that was my iPhone um, he had Paintings of, you know, baby Jesus, the sacred heart of Jesus, the Virgin Mary, saints, uh, idols, statues, rosaries, you know, all the things that Catholics have. And my mom, well, she was a Christian. She was uh, attending by then. I'm not sure it was a Pentecostal church or a... Evangel or an evangelical church. Anyway, in the bedroom, um, on top of the matrimonial bed where my mom and dad used to sleep, my father ha had hanged on the wall the picture of the Sacred Heart of Jesus, El Sagrado Corazón de Jesús. And I don't know if you guys are aware of that pi picture, I have a picture here on the uh, iPhone that I searched on Google um, on images to the Sacred Heart of Jesus and this is the painting. That's the painting that my dad had hanged on top of the, um, the matrimonial bed. And right here you can see the Heart of Jesus with a crown of thorns and some fire on top, etc., etc. You know how Catholics are that they have images and stuff. They worship images. Well, anyways, one, uh, one day after she finished with uh, some house chores in the kitchen, she went upstairs to rest for a little while. My dad was attending to his business because he owned his own business. And my mother was taking a nap and all of a sudden she wakes up I think she had a nightmare or something and when she opens up her eyes she sees three demons coming out of the painting of the sacred heart of Jesus she saw one huge demon in the middle and two little ones on each corner of the painting and she said they were horrible and hideous and ugly and they talked to her, not using their mouths, but somehow they communicated with her. And she got the message. She said that she could hear it in her, with her ears, but also with her mind. They said, we're going to turn you crazy, insane. And everything happened so fast. She said that she saw them coming out of the painting, and, you know, trying to get into her through... Uh, or well, from the top of her hair, I'm sorry, the top of her head. And she just closed her eyes and covered, her, you know, the, the top of her head. And she said, no, you're not. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. I'm covered by the blood of Jesus. And they just fled and they were gone at the mention of the name and the blood of Jesus. So another example um, by empirical facts personal experience that the name of Jesus, the name of Yeshua, has power. And we have authority over demons in the name of Yeshua and his blood. Okay? Don't be mistaken. So, um, she told my dad, and my dad didn't believe her, of course, because he was not really a Christian. He was Catholic. And... Uh, well, eventually, to make the story short, when uh, one day they were doing something, I don't know if he was putting wallpaper on the on the walls of the bedroom, 
he tried to hang the picture and the picture would fall wouldn't stay there would fall in intervals of 15 minutes and my mother um, acknowledged or recognized that that was a message from God meaning that he was not pleased of you know of them having that picture that idol hanged on to the wall so you know finally my dad was so tired of hanging the picture and the picture falling in intervals of 15 minutes which of course it might seem like oh is it is it coincidence but it's really not because in God there's no coincidence I mean intervals I could say you know if it wasn't if it was coincidence maybe it was falling in different intervals like every well two minutes here then you hang it up and it falls 10 minutes later and then you hang it again on the wall and then it falls 20 minutes later like that but this was every 15 minutes so when the third time uh, the picture fell from the wall my mom told him you know can't you see that that picture has has fallen from the from the wall three times already three times and I've been keeping you know record of the time and it has been in intervals of 15 minutes we need to get rid of that painting and of course my my dad was uh, trying to probably acquiesce because he was tired or maybe fed up of her just, you know, telling him get rid of the painting because of the experience that she had, which, of course, my dad never um, believed her. So, um, the thing was that when they... Uh, Get, got rid of the painting, or I'm sorry, not the painting, the picture. Uh, my mom took it outside and she tried to slam the picture frame uh, very hard against uh, the big trash can, uh, which were made out of metal. That was in Puerto Rico. And uh, what should I say? Uh, Amazingly, the, the the glass of the frame never cracked. So when she, you know, she was tired of trying to crack the what you might call it, the glass of the of the painting. Of, I'm sorry, of the picture of the frame. When she was unsuccessful, then she gave up and she just put it there, you know, laying around the the other trash for the trash truck to come and pick it up. But she noticed that in the back of the painting were three crosses made like somebody drew three crosses with pencil. And amazingly, they were in the position that she saw the three demons, the big one in the middle and the other two um, in the corners, the small because there were like it was a big cross in the middle and two little crosses on each corner of uh, the upper corners of the picture. So um, my mom truly believes that um, that picture had that because the woman that was living previously with my dad before he got married to my mom, uh, she, I think she was a witch or she would practice Santeria or mix Catholicism with Santeria. You know how they are. They mix voodoo with Catholicism, Santeria with Catholicism. Some people are even calling themselves Christian witches. I mean, what is that? Even the Bible says that if Jesus said, if you're not with me, you are against me. There is not no such thing as the best of both worlds. You're either in or you're out. There's no in between. Even Jesus said, you know, lukewarm Christians, I will puke you, I will throw you out of my mouth <sighs> anyway yes that was the um, the the experience and you know our we might have uh, family members that are Catholic and my father was Catholic and The reason why I never decided to be Catholic was because I picked up the Bible and I found the truth. 
I will go to a Catholic church and never find that I was filled with anything. I was empty. The same way I would get in, the same way I would get out. The Holy Spirit was not in there, I'm telling you. And I'm not criticizing Catholics, but those of you that have gone out of Catholicism because you were Catholic before, you know what that I'm telling the truth. And I lived this with my dad. Um, with my dad, he was a Catholic by tradition because his family was Catholic, because he was raised Catholic. But he would never go to church or to Mass. Then he would pray the rosary, you know, in vain repetitions, uh, our father, Hail Marys, or whatever. And um, it was like part of the tradition, the custom, not really that he really meant it. Um, if he would pick up a Bible, it was not really to read it, but to go to work with it and then come back and that Bible was there unopened. Like, he would never read the Bible. For him, the Bible was just a charm. And if you see when people go to Catholic churches, they go to Mass and they never carry a Bible and they never study the Bible. And the priest is the one that says everything, preaches, but I mean, if Catholics would pick the Bible up and read, they would know that uh, giving worship to Mary, the saints and little baby Jesus, you know, those are things that are satanic they're pagan Jesus never stayed as little baby Jesus Jesus uh, grew up into a man he lived 33 years and he gave his life for the sins of humankind he was a grown man Mary was a virgin when she conceived of the Holy Spirit and had Jesus in her in her womb but as soon as she gave birth to Jesus you know Jesus had other brothers so other siblings, so Mary was not a virgin anymore. If you read the Gospels and the New Testament, you will find that the miracles were done by Jesus, not by Mary. Even that wedding that they uh, went, they ran out of wine, and I, I'm not sure how it goes, but um, somebody came close and told Mary and she went to Jesus, you know, recognizing and acknowledging that he was the only one that could make the miracle. There is no account in the Bible in which Mary uh, made healings, I mean, you know, healed anyone or died for the sins of the world or none of that. Jesus is the only one that... Uh, gave his life for us. He died because he loved us. He never sinned, although he was tempted, but he never sinned. And he resurrected the third day. And he ascended to heaven. And before he ascended to heaven, he presented himself to the disciples and the women. And they couldn't recognize him because he was with his glorified body. So only Jesus deserves all the honor and glory and majesty and all of our worship. When he died, the veil in the temple teared in two, meaning now we have access to the Father through Jesus. He's a high priest. No other earthly man here on earth, the priest that you go to confess or uh, the Pope, none of them. They're human beings just like you and I. They make mistakes. They sin too. And they can't be saved unless it is through Jesus. Everyone here on this earth have to go through Jesus for forgiveness of sins and to be saved. So, um, Mary died. She never resurrected. The saints died. They never resurrected. Only Jesus. Only his blood. So anyway, I'm going to be quiet now because it's, uh, it's about to be 15 minutes. I'm so sorry this took so long. 
I started talking about my mom's experience with this Catholic image that my father had, and I ended up with talking about Catholicism. I don't know, I'm just throwing that out in case any of you needs to hear this. Um, and like I said, I'm not criti criticizing Catholics. I'm just saying, um, if you want to know the truth, don't, don't trust any man. And that goes also for Christians. Any pastor, any... No, no, no. Just go to God and to prayer. Pick up the Bible. Read it as the Holy Spirit to help you understand what's in the Word of God. And the truth is there. Let me tell you, the truth is there. And you will find out that a lot of the dogmas that the Catholic Church has don't go hand in hand with what the Bible says. So, having said that, have a wonderful Monday. Pray for me. I'll pray for you. I love you all in the name of Yeshua. And um, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to comment. Uh, or make a video response, make a very video response and tag me or send me the link or send me an inbox, whatever. Um, anyway, I'm going to let you go, guys. I, I've talked too much. Bye. Till the next one.